Next, we're going to hear from Penny Perkins. She's an award-winning writer, visual artist, and educator. Her photography has been shown at dozens of galleries and juried exhibitions around the country, and we were honored at our last conference that she did a real quick slideshow for us on the five-minute stories, and it was just wonderful. Um, Penny has trained in photography and videography at the Visual Studio Studies Workshop in Rochester, New York, and the Center for Photography in Woodstock, New York, among other places. Her longest ongoing photographic series and the subject of several solo shows is dedicated to documenting commercial architecture, particularly vintage neon signs. Her novel, Bob Bridges, an apocalyptic fable, was published in 1999 by Chrome Deco Press and won her the Best Author Award in 2000 for Metro Land Magazine. Currently, she is an assistant professor for communications and interdisciplinary studies at Russell Sage College in Troy, New York, where she has taught since 2006. Penny has more than 25 years' experience as a senior communications professional working in a variety of industries. And she will be talking about neon icons, vintage roadside signs along Florida's scenic byways. I know one of the things that, um, that everybody's interested in here as, um, uh, um, sorry, as an SCA member uh, is I see you all out you know, on the bus tours and everyone has a camera, right? <laughs> so, um, so I would like to talk a little bit about my, my series, the neon icons, um, some of my philosophy about it, and then at the end I have some photographs from um, signs around this area right here in uh, St. Petersburg that hopefully we'll see on our bus tours, but if not, you'll get a sight. And some of the decisions, you know, some of the things to consider you know, as you are out there on your travels and, and your passions, taking photographs of things, and, and some of the the um, ideas that you should consider or you know think about to help you decide how to take photographs. Fair enough. So I don't come to you as an academic with a lot of uh, historical facts. I come to you as a photography peer to help you consider some things about um, one of my passions. Um, my name is Penny, and I'm a photographer, and so are you. <laughs> uh, that's what I'd like to speak with you about today. And I, um, I particularly, I, I love, I love signs, uh, and I love the neon signs, uh, particularly from the. Uh, the 30s and 40s, where you know, and, and the 50s, but you know, this the, where there is this craftsmanship, you know, and this is from the bus tour yesterday, and we were all out there taking our photographs with them. Well, that that's what I that's what I want to talk to you about. Why? How can it? And I'm I'm going to show you some uh, photos later uh, uh, toward the end. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, just to get into. You know, a lot of us I see have really nice cameras. You know, these DS DS. Sorry. These DSLR cameras, um, you, you know, and you can get really good shots with them. But this photograph, um, with the richness in it, uh, you know, I took with my um, iPhone, and I, I, yeah, and I use um, a, a, an application called Hipstamatic, which I mean, some of you are, I think, are familiar with Instagram, right? So it's it's like that, and it has the filters on it. And I was thinking about this listening uh, earlier to the presentation about what what's fake versus faux versus authentic. Authentic. So, um, you know, the hipstamatic and the Instagram, they have filters which give you a, a look which may be fake, but in some ways to me, because it, it, the, the filter that's on it with the richness and it pops the colors and you've got the, the, the blurry edges, it's almost more authentic because that's what the content of the photograph is about. The fading, you, you know, and I really see these old signs. Part of the reason I love them is I also love time travel. And I feel like in some ways they are the ultimate time-based medium. You know, they were made as these three-dimensional sculptures meant to be seen head-on uh, to entice you to come to some place for some reason, usually to eat something, to sleep somewhere, um, or to the arrow buy gas here. Um, so there are these very physical things in the world trying to convince us as consumers to, um, to come to these commercial establishments. And yet, they exist over time. Many of them are you know, dilapidated. And so they, they really become a, a time machine. And I was thinking about that during the Route 40 talk, too. So. Um, 
so I, so I try to, I'm trying to grapple with these artistic and psychological issues uh, for myself about why I'm so attracted to these objects, these material objects, and am driven to passionately document them, and not just document them, but to turn them into art. And so some of the reasons is um, because they help me, by looking at these signs, these objects, um, and they make me think about things. You know, what is the psychology of human beings, you know? why so much of the American culture is so motivated by economics and commercial activity. You, you know, and so, and we have these incredible motels and these, you know, diners that we go to, and, uh, you know, yet, you know, this is all about a commercial activity versus some sort of community activity or artistic activity, uh, and, and it just makes me think about those things. Who are we as an American people and the kind of cultural, you know, legacies that we put out, and especially in the context of this group, I think those are interesting questions. And to that end, you know, what do signs represent? You know, and what kind of culture do they reflect? So the kind of culture, this is um, in the background here, I have pictures of it later. This is the Banyan Tree Motel right here in St. Petersburg on 4th, on fourth, on fourth, which to me is just this incredible sign. It's just gorgeous. Um, you know, so there's this artistry that goes into the making these commercial objects too. So there is this uh, this overlap, and to me that's really interesting and is a reflection of the, of the culture. And, and for me, like I said, I'm really interested in time travel. Photography itself is a time-based medium, of course, you know, and the signs themselves, I think, are these three-dimensional time-based um, artistic sculptures um, that are left over. Um, this also is right here in St. Pete. Uh, the, bus, the bus went past this yesterday. Um, I've also uh, spent a lot of my life as a graphic designer um, communicating, and so trying to use um, words and the shapes of words uh, to draw attention to ideas and to messages, and so that I really relate to that too, is, is what what these signs do, and they're and especially these older signs, because they were all built individually by hand, they are they are absolutely works of art, and they they are creating the fonts and the typefaces, and many of them are just unique. You know, it's not like you go to your computer and you pick Helvetica or Arial or you know, God forbid, Times New Roman, you know, <laughs> for the default, but but the you know, somebody had to craft the, this, every single letter. And to, to me, I, that's incredible. And it's a lost art, you know, and we're, you know, you, you don't see that. And with the plastic signs, uh, you know, with the fluorescent bulbs behind them and the plastic, I mean, that's all, it's all mass produced and, you know, it's all made on a computer and then it's transferred to this, through this digital process. So there's the way that this is about, this is so authentic. You know, this is analog. This is a craftsman in a shop building this with, you know, blowtorch and, you know, the noble gases. We've had a lot of discussion about <laughs> what is neon. Uh, you, you can't get any more, you know, real than something from the periodic table stuck in the, <laughs> into a three-dimensional sign. And that's very different from designing something on a computer, sending it out, and getting it made in a, in a mass production shop and, and uh, getting it slapped up so that every single Dunkin' Donuts from the East Coast to the West Coast looks exactly the same. The sign for every Dunkin' Donuts is the same. Uh, you know, there's only one of these, you know. It's a, um, it's a shopping center? Yes, a shopping center, yeah. Um, um, so, and, um, the, the, so for me, these are these the neon. It is a time machine, and it's a and it's a time tunnel. And so to just try to think about that, the, these things. And the other thing about them is that they're, they're just so cool. Uh, this also is right here in St. Pete's. The we went past this on the bus yesterday, but it's the Sandman Motel. Um, and you know, you just you've got the guy dancing. He's the, I mean, the whimsy of that. It's right from the Enchanted Forest. You know, the 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 fairy coming to put you to sleep every night, you know? So do you see that in like the Hyatt, you know, do you, in the, in the, in the motels? Yeah, yeah the, 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 you know, the Marriott, it doesn't have pictures of the Sandman putting you to sleep, okay? It's about, it's, it's about corporate branding, it's about a corporate logo, it's, it's about this consist, consistency on a global, uh, you know, on a global space, you know, and there just is not the space for this individuality, this, this expression of a personality. And I think I'm really interested in that too. You know, again, as an artist, what does it mean to create art? You know, what does it mean to be an individual in a, in a mass production culture? 
you know. Uh, so these 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 signs give me uh, stalking them out, you know, trying to take um, interesting photos of them. They give me time to meditate too, uh, again about who we are and what does our world become, and um, and they're just not being made today like this. Um, uh, it's a different time and a different world, um, and I, I I think about those things. So, so one thing I think that we can and should do, and I see us doing, is that we should we should document these, we should take photographs of these, we should um, you know share them with other enthusiasts on Flickr, on Tumblr, on Facebook, as a way to get awareness, you know. And I think this is an absolutely perfectly uh, valid enterprise to do. It, it, it's a way of preservation, you know, documenting these things as they are disappearing in front of us. Um, and because they, they're weathered, this is from Florida, this is um, on one of the back roads, this was the color, um, uh, color TV sign. Uh, and as you can see, it's been painted over several times and all the neon is gone, the holes are where the neon tubes went in. Um, and you know, they're just, these are just disappearing. They're, they're neglected um, and they're, they're sh the, the, the places are shuttered, you know, they're closing, uh, they're closing down. Um, and even when they do exist, they're still disappearing. This is um, from the Krispy Kreme in Gainesville, uh, across from the university um, there. So one of the enterprises I, I like to do it, it, with my Neon Icon series is um, not just document, although I always take a larger photo and of the context, but then to see what kind of beauty can I um, sort of extract from this object that maybe someone else isn't really seeing. So the uh, so I'd just like to read you quickly a little bit of my artist statement um, uh, about this about how I see, take it, this is from, um, actually from the Wildwoods tour. It was from the, the motel sign for Twilight. Uh, not the books, but the, the hotel. <laughs> and uh, this is a close up of, of part of the sign. So, you know, in, in the original context, these things were advertisements. They're meant to be looked at um, in total and to, to entice you to come to their place. But I hope that by forcing viewers to literally look at the signs from new perspectives and, to, and photography transforms them from these three-dimensional sculptures in the world to a two-dimensional art, um, that I want to turn these, uh, you know, what someone else might consider a mundane relic of consumerism, I want to turn that into something something that's intimate and two-dimensional and artistic. And I try, and I try to do this by fragmenting um, the, the image. So in a, in a way, by destroying it more, taking uh, part pieces of the dilapidation out of context and then blowing it up, uh, it's a way to fragment it more, but also hopefully to add beauty to it and to see it in more abstract uh, terms, you know, as, as visual artists like to look at things, patterns, colors, textures. So here is an example, I'll show you a couple quick examples of how I like to do this. This is uh, in the Adirondacks in, in New York State, and it in itself is this incredible sign, you know, and it's a beautiful day, the blue, the blue behind the blue. Um, and so I always document the whole and the context when I see it. But then I focus in on some part that is interesting to me, and I blow it up. And you know, this, and then this is what is usually is in the exhibitions, these big pieces that themselves, if you didn't know that was from a neon sign, you wouldn't know what it was. But it, it, then it just becomes art. So again, it's texture, it's color, and, um, and it's light, and, and the shadows. So, and I, and so here's the very same sign, but here's another piece of it, you know, done, uh, done differently. And, and I think that there's a real beauty in this, and hopefully shows that there's another way of looking at these signs, um, certainly as preservationists, preservationists we can, but maybe we can also look at them as artists. And if we present them that way, maybe that will generate other interest in them as well, uh, that absolutely we should preserve these. Uh, here's another one. This is in Saranac Lake, also in the Adirondacks, the Do Drop In, such a classic name, uh, a restaurant. So I just focused in on a piece of it, and then that's the, the, pro the final f for, the, um, for the art show. And here's another detail of it. And again, you go in, and you blow it up, and it's the texture, the detail, the shape, the patterns. Um, and I hope it brings beauty. I, um, this is, um, I made a, I had a uh, solo exhibition about this. I made a catalog of it, and here is um, uh, the spread spread out of, of all of the pieces that were in that from um, uh, six, six different signs. Um, and 
what I would like, and when I do this, I go into areas and I do this, so I had a, another show recently in the Albany area of signs around that. Um, and so then, um, Another thing that I like to do is not just focus in on the details, but to take it again and create a new art piece. So think of the signs as, as found objects, and then take photographs of them and recombine them uh, into, into something that's wholly new that, again, kind of reflects the past, but looks towards something uh, different. So here is, um, this is a sign in Albany, New York, where I used to live. Um, it's a restaurant that's been shuttered forever, and I, this sign can, won't last long, because it's it's just there on, on prime property. It's, it's been uh, shut for uh, at least a decade. Um, so this sign, I went and I took lots and lots of photos of this. And I, in addition to uh, documenting the context of it, the whole thing, then I also got details that I thought were interesting. So I, I take these uh, fine art details and then I replicate them and I put them in different combinations and then I create a new piece of art. So again, I, for me, something like this is to pay homage to what the thing is, but also to try to, to spark new interest in it by using it as, as the basis for a new piece of artwork and, and, and to show it around. Because many, many people drive past this is on Central Avenue, a main uh, thoroughfare. And don't even look at that. They don't even notice it. But maybe if they uh, come to this in a show, that looks like, wow, what is that base? Oh, that's that Elkin sign. Oh my gosh, I never even think. So just another way to use art uh, to um, engender awareness about these material culture objects, uh, in addition to you know the, the the history of them and and the preservation of them uh, in more traditional channels. So um, I would like to end with some of the um, uh, photos uh, that I took around St. Petersburg um, in this area. And uh, I've made this poster, which I'll be selling at the bazaar. There's my little, there's my commercial plug. Uh, <laughs> uh, and these are all from signs in the, in the area. Um, this is a Pete and Shorty's Tavern over on the uh, Gulf Bay, uh, Gulf to Bay Boulevard. It's fantastic with the, with the, um, the bevel glass and, 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 and this. And again, here, this is the hipstamatic image, the image from the cell phone, and here is the image from the fancy camera. So, uh, you know, to me, this image is more interesting, again, because it's more saturated, it, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's more eye catching, but this is the image with the expensive camera. So, uh, you know, again, I always document it with the expensive camera, but I try to get the artistic images with the with the other camera. Uh, this was a really cool place, also in the in the same area on the Gulf to Bay Boulevard. And this is what it was: it was a rent-a-car place, and just had neon in the side a little bit. So, I, you know, I walk around the whole place. I see, this was a very cloudy, overcast day. So I'm I'm looking for you know what colors can, are going to pop, what 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 piece of it can represent the whole, you know, in an artistic way. Um, um, and so, you know, I, I photograph it from different ways and different angles, and then I settle on the thing that I like best. Um, so I, so, you know, that's just what I offer to you. When, when you go out to see something, you know, walk around it, look, you know, look at the angle. Um, this was uh, near the same area, this beautiful piece. I, I love the way that it was um, uh, tearing, tearing apart here. Uh, again, here's the, the image from the nice camera. You can get a larger picture of it. Um, but again, I like the saturated, punchy image that you get with the, with the instamatic or hip, hipstamatic application. Um, the Kentucky Motel is really uh, fantastic because the neon's on all the time, even in the daylight. Uh, this is on um, uh, uh, on Fourth Street North. A lot of these signs here were. The, the other thing I would ask you to consider when you're taking your photographs to document it, you, you know, a lot of these signs are freestanding, so they have multiple sides. <laughs> so you know, and what it, what it says on one side of this side, no franchise cost, we compete, is different from what's in the circle on the other side, safe for families and seniors. So, uh, you know, I always try to take uh, photos from, from both sides of the sign. I, I look to see what are the conditions of, of the sunlight, of, of clouds, you know, just what is going to show it off in its best light. Um, and, I, and I take several to, uh, so that I, when I get back and look at them through the camera, I can see what that's going to be. Um, and then, of course, you know, I like to take the details, which itself may become, uh, you know, an image later as, as one of these um, shows. Um, here's the context. So this is the, the Kentucky Motel behind the sign. And if you can see, there's just a little 
piece of blue in there. So the other thing I always look for are the other neons, you know, the, the, vac the vacancy, no vacancy sign, the office sign, the parking sign. So when you, when you have something like this, I, it's not just the sign up front. There are often our little ancillary signs uh, around too. So I, I'm always, I'm looking for those too. And again, just the weatheredness of it, the colors of it, you know, those, the way, the fantastic way the O and the C reflect the roundedness on the end. Um, you know, I just think visually it's very beautiful. And then here's the other context science. You can see where, where the hotel is in relationship to other things on the street. So, the, so these context things, these aren't necessarily something that, that I would show you know, as part of an art piece, but it's something that I like to have so I know the context and can tell the story about it uh, you know, if, if I'm writing about it uh, as well. Um, this is also on 4th Street, the El Cap restaurant. A uh, great old sign. Kind of looks like a reproduction to me, but the research I did seems to suggest it's been there a long time. Uh, I, if I, I couldn't find much about it. Um, again, here's um, here's the the standard document documentary image of it, which I took with with the um, the DSLR. Um, but here is the 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 hipstamatic image of it, which I think, again, even though it's fake, because it has filters, <laughs> it, it's faux, right? It's faux, uh, but it, it really brings forth, I think, the era better and the the, the feeling of, of what the sign represents. Uh, so, and sometimes when I'm looking, I try to capture them in different ways. So it was a really rainy day, and there was also kind of a cool image of it in, in, the, in the puddle. So, so that's, an, I think, another thing. Sometimes you can get really cool pictures of signs reflected from windows, reflected from, from car windshields or hoods or, or from the waters. So just another thing to keep in mind as, you, as you're taking um, your photos. Um, the Landmark Hotel, this is a, a good example. Again, um, the dilapidation was different on one side of the sign than the other sign. And I also play sometimes with how much to crowd the frame. So here you can see the 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 sign actually is touching the edges of the frame. I, it kind of gives it a, it's popping out, makes it feel bigger. You know, maybe that makes me feel a little claustrophobic. So then I give it a little more room and this, you know. So I think that's another thing that you can do when you take your pictures. Different, you know, close up, medium, wide. And then when you get back, you can look at them and say, okay, which one, you know, looks the best to me or represents, you know, what's happening uh, in this material object better. Um, here's a really good example, I think, in terms of technique. So I took pictures on both sides of, of the sign. Um, as you can see, the one on, the, on um, your left, there's not the same dilapidation as there is on the right, but also um, the sun is shining on one side and not the other. So for, for me as a photographer, I really am interested in the light. And so you want, you want the sun to be shining on your object. You know, it's kind of like the best face forward. Um, so to me, the one on the, the right is much more interesting because it's got the sun and it's got the dilapidation, and I think it tells the story better. Uh, this is the China City restaurant um, right down the street from um, the Kazaki Motel. This is a great sign. It's curved. It's got this uh, awesome font on it, um, and, again, and it's just the arrow, you know, just come here. So the same thing, you know, you photograph it from both sides, from different angles. You know, do you want the arrow to, you know, how, what angle do you want it to look like? Uh, you know, where's the sun shining? What's the background, the, the clouds like? Um, so when I go and I take these photos, I mean, I can spend a long time in one place, sometimes waiting for the cloud to pass, uh, clouds to pass, or waiting for the sun to come out. Um, uh, so that's part of me is, is the documentation of this. And, and again, this sign had just had great details. And when you get up close to it, you s really see the markings of time and the, and the weathering. And you know, this is this is something that has been in the world, and you know, like all of us, <laughs> suffered the ravages of time. <laughs> and, and, and the signs have no wrinkle cream like we can have. Um, uh, this, I think, is my favorite sign uh, of, of this series around here, this Banyan Tree Motel um, down on 4th Street. Again, again, because there are Banyan trees around here, uh, so it is reflective of also the natural environment. And just the, the, the tree, the colors, the weathering, and, and the color of the motel that it's on. So there is the, 
you know, the motel. It's right next to the highway. It's so close to it. And, and it, you know, as a photographer, it was really hard to get photo photographs of this because there's, it's right next to the highway. You know, half the time I'm about to be hit because I'm not paying any attention. Uh, and a lot of these are so close to the road. But, you know, I'm trying to get close enough to get the detail. Um, but, you know, you get too close, you start to distort the image of it. Um, but I just think this is just a gorgeous um, piece of work. And also the weathering on it has just made it um, even, even better. Um, again, some of the details of this sign up close. Uh, y y you know, again, you can still tell their letters, but it started to become a abstract. You know, I, I like that aspect of it. And again, this fantastic, you know, parking underneath it that you can't, that little parking sign in, in this version of the photo, you can't see it. So I try to get all, all pieces of the sign, even if they don't always fit into this, the same photo. Um, and this is an example, again, uh, of the, the hipstamatic, the different filterings, how it gives different emotional flavors to this very same image. So, you know, and you can program it, you know, what you want it to look like. In the hipstamatic thing, it's a software application, and you choose a lens, and you choose a film, and the, and the film in each lens has a filter that puts on it. Um, so I really, I really like to play with this and, and see, you know, what comes out of, of these different combinations. And to me, it's just it's a little more interesting than that image, which was taken with the, you know, the regular DSLR. Um, again, this sign, of course, is two sides, uh, and um, it, this one side is much more weathered than the other side, um, and so you, you know, you make your choices about what you think is the most interesting angle uh, way to look at it. Uh, here is another great sign in Gulfport. Um, love all of the angles of this sign, the different colors, you know, the shapes, and it also, uh, when you look at the context of it and where it is, it's also claiming to be Gulfport's oldest business. So I thought that was an interesting piece of um, information too. Um, so that's the other that's the other side of it. Uh, and just a couple more here. Um, uh, the bowling sign actually has neon in it, but the whole building is just fabulous. And in terms of font, that 10-pin lanes, I just, those, yeah, those incredible serifs on the N and on the P, just really beautiful, and, and, and the colors there, too. Uh, and that's a more, more of the context of the building. Um, and the Thunderbird. I, I, I want to show you these signs because I took these photos on a, on a cloudy day, um, as opposed to when we went on the bus yesterday, and it was a beautiful blue day. So it's just it's, the the light, the weather, the time of year, the light just makes such a difference in your photography. So um, so same place, virtually same angle, and just really different images. Um, and then this sign is just incredible with all of the neon and just the, the bird, the shape of the bird and the shape of the letter, it's just so beautiful. Um, and I just thought I would end where we began with these kind of weird globes and the globe of the liquor store <laughs> uh, from the, where we started yesterday. But um, uh, I thank you very much. I have a, a website that has more of the neon icons on it and um, a, a series including some of the web Wildwoods images from our last SEA conference on this website right here. So thank you very much.